Hello, you welcome. You watching the Funny White Man Show, which is the biggest, the brightest, and the most entertaining show in Africa. Funny you White Man. Funny, funny White Man. Funny, funny, funny White Man. But this way you talk, you too much. Give me five thousand man. That's you. You too much. So you get to like, make sure you move along the street. Ah, yeah, make sure like they are going girl. You know, my own people. Ah, actually. Yeah, fine, it's fun. I enjoy it. And I'm one of those very few. I'm I'm forever is taking it personal. Very good. I will listen to 160 million Nigerians are corrupt. How? I rather I'm looking for you. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a growth, and this is the time to build business and know the pitfalls and know what to do and what not to do. But there are months where you get business and months. You know how we do, how we turn up. We did the way you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you welcome. You watching Trending Matters on the Funny White Man Show. Of course, they will bring you trending issues just to entertain and tickle your fancy. Hello, you welcome to the Funny White Man Show. My name is the Funny White Man. Uh, we, have, uh, we have loads of exciting stuff lined up uh, just for you, and I have in the studio right now a wonderful writer producer and director and she'll be joining us a little bit later but first i want to give a big congratulations to all the people of ogun state you're 40 years old now and i wish you all the best and i want to encourage if you are join the conversation online you can do that via our social media platform on facebook it's for slash the funny white man show on Twitter, it's at the underscore funny white man. Follow us on Instagram at funny white man show 360. On Google Plus, it's funny white man show. And if you want to send an email to us, it's funny white man show at gmail.com. We'll go on a break and we'll come back. We'll meet our amazing guests. Don't go away. <laughs> You welcome back. It's still the funny white man show. Like I said before the break, my first guest on the show today is a wonderful writer, producer, and a director. Welcome, in Kiru Njoku. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm good. I'm good. Congratulations on everything, though. It's been been a wonderful ride for you. It's writing, okay. detail. Thank you. Co-producing, MTN Project Fame, Mama Awards. I'm seeing your future. Mama now. Awards. <laughs> Well, I, this is what I want us to do in this conversation. I want you to, when you were young, you used to write. I'm still young, excuse me. No, as me. in when you were a little bit younger. Okay. Uh, you still used to write love letters. Because you you, know, you write a lot. You can write anything. Uh, but no, I wasn't into writing love letters. No. Okay, okay, but you used to write something back then, though. I used to write poetry as a teenager, but love letters, no. Okay, okay no, no problem. Well, let's take it back a little bit. Uh, how was your childhood like? Um, it was regular, really. Okay. Regular, Just regular childhood. Okay. You know, lived with my parents, went to school, did all the things that little kids used to do. I like regular. to do especially on that year. Just like mm, went to school. Yeah, but because it wasn't, because it wasn't most anything. People, most people would be like, my childhood was amazing. I, I, I get to do this. I get to do that. Uh, well, that's their story. My okay. own story is that my childhood was regular. Okay. It was good for what it was. I went to school, I had a good time. I wasn't the kid who used to, you know, play rough okay. or anything. I was, I really liked my books. I really used wow, to read, okay. read a lot. Like novels, I really used to read novels. I started reading novels pretty young. So I used to enjoy that a lot. And that was my child was boring, I'll be honest. <laughs> well, def <laughs> definitely, uh, and it has turned out to be good. Reading then has made you being, uh, bring out that creative view. And yeah, that's actually true, you know, because what's, led me to writing was actually reading okay. because i loved reading a lot i still love reading you, still, you, still you know read. yeah so it made me enjoy the written word and i started wanting to express myself in the way that i was reading so that's 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 amazing though but uh, i i read your profile and uh, there was something that fascinated me i caught my attention was that you didn't know you're going to do this as in write produce and direct so how did it all start for you well, my mom used to work with the NTA as a producer, and okay. for me that was like, I saw that world. I didn't think I would have anything to do with it because I'm pretty shy, so I didn't understand how it was possible that I would have anything to do with this kind of business that I do now. But um, when I started writing, I segued from poetry to writing prose, and then from prose I 
you know, found my, found, found my way into screenwriting. Okay. And then there was actually a time in my life when I was an actress. Wow. For about three or four <laughs> years. I never say it, you know, I mean, if you don't know, you don't know. But no, if you I, know, I, I you don't know. know. I don't know, but I didn't you want know, to. But, know. but the point is that um, it wasn't my thing. Being in front of the camera wasn't really my thing. I did it for, you know, a number of years, but... Uh, when the program eventually folded up, I was kind of happy because no, I, I what, thought... What, what roles are you I, I played... played I, seriously, I played the role of a bad girl who was dating... Wow. Who was married to her boyfriend's father. Okay. You know, it was very... It was a scandalous little role. No, it wasn't a little role, but it was a scandalous um, person that she was. And that was what I played. Um, but like I said, I'm not really an actor. Okay. That's the honest um, truth. I'm not an actor. I just liked to do it and I could do it so I but did it. But if an opportunity comes now? Probably, well, a few friends of mine who are in the same industry have said, oh, Inkiri, you should come and, you know, take this role and do this little thing for me, my film and all of that. But there are people who really want to do this, you know, so I think that if there are people who want to do it, why should I take their own space? Let them go and do it because it's not really what I want to do. Okay. What I want to do is what I am doing and I want to stick with that. That's, that's, that's great. I love that. I'm motivated by that already. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit tough. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously though, uh, you, 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 you wrote uh, Teen Cell? I am the head writer of yeah. Teen Cell okay. right now. I became the head writer um, in August, I think, 2014. So I don't write Teen Cell alone. There's a whole yeah, team sure. okay. of 14 writers. I'm one of the writers, but I'm the head writer. You know, you know one thing I love about Teen Cell is the fact that it helped build a lot of brands. Uh, right from uh, Glenro, Sasa, those guys. I, I, I wish I was there, though. I, 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 if you're trying of, to get a role, <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me just assure you that you go for a proper audition. <laughs> so there's no way, no, no way, way at man, all. No way, uh, man. No way. Okay, no, no problem, though. But but how how did it all come come about? The storyline and stuff like that. How was this? Um, I like? wasn't I wasn't with Tinsel in the beginning. Okay. You know, I joined Tinsel. Uh, wow. Sorry, my math is bad, but I joined Tinsel several years ago, but not from the beginning. Okay. Tinsel is in season eight now. Um, so I can't tell you how they started the stories, but when I joined in, of course, I went in and, you know, joined them where they were. And that's how, it, really. How, how was the experience like, though? Very, at first, I was just a freelance Tinsel writer. Okay. In terms of, I was giving scripts and I would write the scripts and that was it, you know. But, um... The experience so far has been has been one of um, one where I've actually learned a lot okay. <clears throat> about my skill. There was a time in my life when I wasn't very confident when it came to calling myself a writer. I mean, many writers will tell you now that, well, the crop of writers that I grew up with, they will tell you that there was a time where you know you would feel weird to say I'm a writer because nobody has really had really paid you for good work. You hadn't really done anything that had made a hit, you know, so you'd be shy to say I'm a writer. But when I started writing for Tinsel, you know, I felt, I felt it was kind of like validation okay. because, of course, you would go through a screening process. You wouldn't just show up and start writing for, for Tinsel. For sure. They would ask you to send um, a sample of your work. You would send a sample of your work. Then they would give you assignments to do from Tinsel. You would do it. And if you were good enough, they would pick you. And that was the process through which I came into Tinsel. So it kind of helped to validate what I was already doing. I'd written for a few other soaps before Tinsel, but, you know, writing for Tinsel, Tinsel was the biggest thing at the time. Yeah, yeah nothing touched it. Nothing touches it till now, you know. So it was, it was an honor for me to be on the team. And I've really learned a lot about myself. I've learned my strengths and what my weaknesses also are. And I've learned how to try and meet deadlines because deadlines are the king. <laughs> well, uh, Reading your profile, though, is that you, 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 you write, you direct, you produce. And I wonder how you, you juggle all these things together. Okay, I'd like to, you know, wax lyrical and say it's, okay. it's a, you know, humongous task. But really, the truth is that in the industry, a lot of us multitask. Oh, yes, sure. A lot of us direct and produce or write and direct, or write and produce, because it's just something that happens naturally. Okay. You know, you, you find yourself writing and you realize that you, you, you're starting to have the eye of a director because you're looking at the things you've written and asking yourself, how can I play this out? Okay. You know, how, you know, if I was directing this, what would I do differently? You know, so that sort of was what led me into wanting to direct. In fact, it actually started when I was an actress because there were things that, I, you know, would happen on set and I would think, ah, if I was doing this, 
this is what I would have done differently, you know. And I would speak with the director and he would say, oh, okay, this sounds like a good idea, oh, that's not a great idea and all of that stuff. So I started yeah. thinking, okay, maybe I could actually do this. But um, there was no opportunity at the time and I wasn't brave enough to venture into it at that time. It was a long time ago. But um, I joined Project Film West Africa and that was actually my first directing ex experience. Yeah. So that was really it. I, I jumped in head first, had never directed in my life before, never called a shot before, but I went for the interview got the job and oh. my bosses were happy to let me try yeah which is what i did and and the rest is history but you, know, but, but you know you know for, for me for me uh what i've come to notice is that a lot of people who write uh after some time they're like okay if i direct i can make uh Sorry to say, more money or... Why are you yeah. sorry to say? Money is very important now. <laughs> really? We're not in the business to... I mean, it is a business. Yeah, That's the thing. Sure. We're not here to play. If it's not going to make money for you, you have absolutely no business doing it, as far as I'm concerned, you okay. know. I mean, writing, directing, all of that stuff is great. It's art, and we're happy to create all this art. But I think it's... I mean, except you have this inheritance, okay. massive inheritance waiting for you somewhere. Yeah. Whatever you're you know, spending your time and effort doing should be able to put food on your table otherwise. Definitely, definitely. And messing around. You, you look, you, you're always busy, that's why you look amazing, but always busy. But when you're free, what do you, what do you get to? How do you relax on a normal day? How do I relax? Honestly, I just hang with my friends and I have drinks. I have drinks? What yeah. kind of drinks? Alcohol, drinks. Wow. When I say drinks, I don't know <laughs> what I would no, I thought it was Coke, Fanta. No way. <laughs> That's that that's that's great. But uh, let's say in five years time, where do you see yourself? Like, uh, what what uh, what project are you working on right now? Okay, thing is, right now I'm actually working on a I'm working on a short film. Okay. I've written it. I'm in pre-production stage now, and I hope to shoot it before the first quarter of the year is up. I hope to, I'm going to direct it myself. Yeah. And for me, that's like again, that's like an inroad into now producing my own films and my own TV content, you know, things that are my own personal okay. intellectual property. Because I've been doing Tinsel, I've been doing Project Film West Africa, and it's all nice and good. But and you're not so on Get TV? Yeah, Get TV is um, owned by Ultima, the company yeah. that also owns Project Film West Africa. So I produce content for, for the channel. And um, I want to get to a point where I have my own content that is sellable, that I can put anywhere and make good money off it. I do not want to be salaried for, you know, I get it, the though. rest of my you life. You know, I, I want to be on the... On that that, that that film, that short film you just said, she, uh, I don't know whether it's I can already up. set in concrete. There's no rule for you. <laughs> really? For any white No, man. so I cannot Forget save you coffee it. in the in the film. I just save you coffee like no. Maya's your coffee. No, you will come for audition. I will put you because you. Let me audition here now. Here. Life on hair. Let's go. <laughs> what role do you want to give me? Come on now. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Well, it has been so nice chatting with you, Thank and you it's a huge right, pleasure man. for you to come. And I hope definitely, uh, whenever I will call you, you come back. I will come. I will come. Okay. Okay. Well, well, guys, that was the amazing and highly creative Inkuru and Joko. We're going to break now and come back. We'll be treating some training issues. Don't go away. Hello, you welcome. You watching the funny white man show, which is the biggest, the brightest, and the most entertaining show in Africa. Funny white man. Funny white man. Funny white man. But this way you talk, you too much. Give me five thousand man. That you. Too much. So you get it like, when she move along the street, ah, yeah, me should like that. I'm girl. No, my own people. Ah, actually, yeah, fine. It's fun. I enjoy it, and I'm one of those very few. I'm forever taking it personal. I will listen one hundred sixty million Nigerians are corrupt. How? I thought I'm looking for you. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a growth and this is the time to build business and know the pitfalls and know what to do and what not to do. But there are months where you get business and months... You know how we do, how we turn up. <laughs> we do the way you do. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you welcome. you watching Trending Matters on the Funny White Man Show. Of course, we will bring you trending issues just to entertain and tickle your fancy. 